Yo, 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 what's up? Hey, dude, are you recording? Yeah, man, what's up? Why am I doing this? All right, dude, you gotta sit down for this one. <laughs> this better be good, dude. Dude, do you think that you could fly out of Fiji in the next three days? I mean, yeah, we're done here, but to where? Where, where am I going? Mongolia. What? <laughs> yeah, like wild, untouched, Genghis Khan, land of nomads, Mongolia. Uh, Listen, man, so these guys, they do crazy expeditions, and like, it's not gonna be easy, there's no real plans, just like tents, dirt bikes, and stuff. Dude, that sounds kind of sketchy. Dude, listen, they need a filmmaker, they can ride ASAP. Like, they gotta book a place tonight. You in? I don't know, man. Dude. Okay. I'm in. If you asked me a week ago where I thought I was gonna be today, I'd say on a beach in Fiji. But a crazy stir of events happened. Now, I'm in Mongolia. So, a motorcycle club called Freshline reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to join and shoot their motorbike expedition across Mongolia. It was insanely last minute, but if there's two things I love in this world, it's adventure and motorbikes. So, I went for it. And after a couple days in the city, getting to know the guys and prepping the bikes, we finally made our way to the rental shop to actually do this thing. It's go time. We have arrived at the bike place. We've packed the bikes. They're incredibly heavy. We've got all our gear on. I'm talking knee pads, jackets, helmets, riding pants. And now it's time to take off and actually do this. Well, like, I can't believe I'm doing this. And yeah, it's, it's action time. Here we go. So it began a journey into something I can only describe at the time as a complete unknown. Absurdly irresponsible, incredibly risky walking down a path in the search of difficulty. And in short form, I believe we call that an adventure. With 1,600 miles and almost 100,000 feet of ascent, the team set out to cover everything from grasslands to deserts and mountain ranges. So sure enough, we had our work cut out for us. The only certainty was that we had a wild road ahead. And over the next couple weeks, I went through an experience that would surely change me forever. I really couldn't believe what I had gotten myself into. When we set out riding motorbikes across a dangerous terrain for two weeks, every night, setting our tents and camping wherever we found ourselves. I mean, what an incredible journey. And as the trek continued, the days began to blend. Every day a new horizon, a destination that felt unreachable, an incomprehensible vastness that leaves you in awe. Being one of the most sparsely populated countries in the world, Mongolia gives a new meaning to the word wild. With vast skies overhead and land stretching infinite and wide, we'd finish each day setting our tents and claiming a new piece of the wild as home. We're building a brotherhood that you could travel to the ends of the world with. Yet, this step is ruthless. The terrain that truly challenges you, whether by foot, horse, or motorbike, you feel as though you are grappling with the very soul of the country itself. The terrain changing so rapidly, so frequently, a testament to Mongolia's fierce and ever-changing heart. One moment you're in the grasslands, riding alongside herds of wild horses, and the next you're deep in the Gobi Desert side by side with camels. No tour buses, no crowded sights, as if the world left a page off its map. There are few frontiers left in this world. With calculated risks, prescribed thrills, this, this was something completely out of the ordinary. A true risk, a true adventure.
every story comes with its difficulties. The challenges we faced on this trip tested me in a way I'd never been tested before. With the terrain and difficult riding, the pressure on the bikes was becoming too much. And while we had some minor repairs in the beginning, it quickly became evident that this pressure was getting worse and there was a chance that our bikes might not make it through this trip at all. Surprise, we have another bike repair. This one is a little bit more serious than the other ones. Uh, this bike is like totally... And uh, right out of the gate, we have a bike down and the strap is... It's broken. So after a good 20 minutes of riding, we have had a breakdown. Surprise, surprise. And then my bike ran out of oil. So it's been burning oil. So basically it sounded like... With constant repairs, we managed to keep the bikes going by the point of our nail. But with loosely strapped together bikes and increasingly difficult terrain, we realized that breaking the bikes was the least of our concerns. And soon enough, the challenges of this landscape started to take its toll on us. Yeah, it's we take the initial impact, yeah, from the oh. brace. So we got swelling right there, right there. I don't know. Not feeling awesome, but hoping that um, hoping it'll be doable. I had like a concussion. I couldn't see. My, I thought I ripped a muscle. The bike lands, front tire digs into the sand. I go over the handlebars, rolling. With the crashes getting worse, we all had to face the reality that at any point, a potentially life-threatening injury could occur. Before we could even process that, it happened. Jordan, you want to do rib pressures and uh, see if he has any crinkly crackling? He's got a busted rib. You know what the doctor's gonna say? Well, take it easy for like 10 months because there's nothing I can do for it. Yeah. Unless it's a punctured lung. Where does it hurt? The ribs? Okay. Any cracking or popping or grinding or rice crispy sounds? No, that first pop felt like my spine adjusting. Uh, so, there's a chance that you might have a collapsed lung. We need to get that sorted out ASAP, so uh, word on the vine is we might be calling a global rescue to get him flown out. So yeah, we'll find out. Global rescue member services, Janine here, how can I help you? Uh, I'm calling because we're riding motorbikes on the edge of the Gobi Desert here, and we had a rider go down, and uh, he crushed or cracked his ribs. He, he's having a lot of trouble breathing, and we suspect he might have a collapsed lung. This is in pretty rough condition, so um, if we have a better option, potentially a chopper to come in here, then we'll take that. You know, it's one of those things that although you know it can happen, you never really think it's going to. But just like that, Moses went down hard. He popped a lung, needed emergency medical attention, and had to be evacuated from the trip. It really set the tone. This wasn't just a ride around the track. I mean, this made it real to all of us. And this adventure required an immense amount of risk, and we'd have to complete it with one less brother. You definitely do go through a lot of hardships, and uh, yeah, you just deal with the problems as they come. It comes with its risks, and you're really gonna want it, so. crashes, life-threatening injuries, and hardships, we thought surely we had lived the most difficult days of this adventure out. But the worst day was yet to come. We just got news that the next leg of our journey, which is the final leg to the campsite, is an absolute crapshoot. Our guide, who seems like a pretty seasoned rider, told us uh, that we're fucked, essentially. So. Basil is taking a stress cigarette because he knows that this is going to be an absolute mess. Right. <laughs> How are you feeling about the uh, impending climb there, Ryan? Probably going to go bad. <laughs> so despite being ill-advised by the most experienced guy we knew... What does Basil know? The Mongolian who's been here before. <laughs> we decided that no challenge was too small. So there began the best and worst day of the adventure. Storm clouds started to billow in, and we quickly realized there was one thing we had not accounted for on this trip, and that was weather. So as we began our ascent, temperatures dropped and tensions rose, and then came the rain. Things went from a drizzle to a pour. Hands went from cold to freezing, and as temperatures approached zero, this already challenging trail turned into a mud battle. 
and at this point we were one missed turn away from losing another comrade to the step. And to be honest, I was stressed, I had every layer of clothing I had on still freezing to the bone, and right when I thought things couldn't get worse, we had a major break on one of the bikes. We're down to our last backup bike. After offloading our last backup bike, we all felt the tension as we were worried that we might not make it to camp without another break. And right when I thought we had a chance, another bike breaks. And at this point, well, Sean says it best. We thought we were SOL, but um... What's SOL? Shit out of luck. So there we were, in our absolute greatest moment of despair and our most dire hour, some locals noticed us struggling with our bikes and invited us into their home. 10 soaking wet, muddy, smelly guys, and they just took us in. They made us hot tea that warmed the soul. And in that moment, I'd never been so grateful for a place to stay. Premium, tastes super good. The yeah, yogurt. Out of this bucket and a gur in Mongolia. So, Riding motorbikes across Mongolia, we got caught in some bad weather, some really cold weather, some really bad roads, a lot of mud. Got stranded, and uh, this family took us in. So I'm staying in that yurt tonight. Not a bad gig. Anyways, let's go. So suddenly, we were sheltered, warm, fed, around good company, learning about a new culture. And somehow, our darkest hour turned into our brightest. It always seems to go that way, doesn't it? A simple reminder that only after our deepest valleys do we ascend to our greatest peaks. I understand that Mongolia is one of those places that feels so far away. An untouched wilderness that feels almost unreachable to go explore, but scattered throughout this terrain in between the cliffs and valleys are communities of people who don't necessarily run into tourists every day so when you do show up and make the effort to forego the mexico's and bali's and do something truly unique you're rewarded for that experience not just by adventures vistas and landscapes but by genuine people living lives perhaps different to yours but so generously willing to share their experience wholeheartedly with you even though you might not always be able to communicate with each other, through some hidden language or something as simple as a smile, they let you in. So we got invited into a little yurt. People were waving us over, so we showed up, they served us tea. Now we've all just been hanging out for the last like, half hour. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's awesome. And even if it's just for a moment, in this place that couldn't feel farther from normal, in the weirdest way, you'll feel at home. It feels ridiculous to say, alongside all this incredible adventure and adrenaline, beers, camping, crashes, and wheelies, the most important part is simply spending time with absolute strangers. Whether it's getting to know the guys I was riding with, building a brotherhood, or using Google Translate with locals, because there's something truly special about Mongolia that transcends the vistas and the landscapes and the exploration. That's the spirit that people have here. Almost a collective soul that while so strange and new, feels oddly familiar. It says welcome, you're safe here. And just, I don't know, almost as if the land itself just accepts you as you are. And I think that, I think that we could all learn something from that.